Welcome back to the Rebel Tech Channel. I'm Justin, and in this video, well, uh, we're covering more budget broadcast microphones. To be honest, I thought I was done uh, with the whole comparison thing. Not that I didn't enjoy it, it's just the fact that it takes a lot of time and it's a lot of editing and a lot of things going on with these, but I do really enjoy it. It just takes a lot of time, in which case I can't put out as much content. But regardless, we have the new AT2040 dynamic microphone. Not only dynamic, but it's a hypercardioid dynamic microphone. And our classic and one of the original budget broadcast microphones, the Rode Pod Mic. And I figured it was very fitting to have the Rode Pod Mic be the first comparison to the AT2040. So first off, Let's talk about the builds of these microphones. And if you've seen them before and if you've used them before, you know that Audio-Technica and Rode make well-made equipment, meaning they are very sturdy. They're made with a lot of love and they really do put a lot of thought into their construction of their equipment, mainly their microphones, especially in this case. With dynamic microphones, they're usually more rugged and more heavy duty there are some exceptions so the full metal construction of these i mean of course there's plastic here and there but pretty much you can feel that a lot of this is metal construction is really nice a brush look on both of them but their grills have different kind of styles one's gray and one's black but for the most part it's pretty standard dynamic microphone with the capsules and diaphragms facing upwards on the top of them. Now, something that I will change, and I just wanted to do a quick test on it, is the strap or kind of like clamp mount that's on the AT2040. I'm not a huge fan of it, but mostly because if you can use a shock mount, I'd rather use a shock mount. It's not gonna hurt anything, and it, it if anything, will make it better. Uh, but if you don't feel like investing in the money, this is what it's going to be like. So I'm going to tap the sides of these microphones and the, the stand and everything. So let's do the AT2040 first. Tapping on the quick release. On the mount itself. And on the body. On the Rode Pod mic, on the other hand, if we were to tap it on the quick release here. On the yoke mount and on the body you probably don't have as much rejection it's pretty good it's not like super rejecting like this one right here everyone knows that one so as far as the builds are concerned i'm giving a slight edge to the at2040 mostly because of that reinforced grill and the pop screen kind of setup we will do plosives in the booth, but I will say that it's a slight edge to the 2040. As we move on to the techie talk part of the video, I'm going to switch this thing over to the shock mount. All right, so the shock mount is on. And uh, just a quick little test. I did this in the other video, but let's compare these two. On the quick release, on the shock mount base, on the shock mount and on the body comparatively. Now, just a refresher, the quick release, the yoke mount, and the body. Just an idea of what you're gonna be getting into. Is it worth it to get the shock mount? It is reinforced, that diaphragm, so you might not need the extra bit of enforcement. But in my opinion, if you're planning on using it and you got a little bit extra cash, or if you wanna save up for it one day, I think it's worth it. You let me know down in the comments if you think it actually makes a difference. So without any further ado, on to Techie Talk. So the first thing that stands out when it comes to comparing these two microphones technically is the polar pattern. We have a hypercardioid compared to a cardioid. And if you've been here before, you know exactly what that means in a cardioid polar pattern. You have a more inflated heart shape that picks up a little bit more on the sides like that and then rejects more of the back. A hypercardioid 
sometimes similar to a supercardioid, but this specifically is a hypercardioid. I'm very excited to compare this to the Zoom ZDM1, which is another one that is a supercardioid. So we'll find out if there is a difference. And this is going to be what it's going to sound like. And of course, I will be doing that in the studio and I will be doing that in the untreated room. So keep an eye out for that. And if you're just interested in that, there are chapters down below and you could skip to the parts that you want to see. I would appreciate if you watch the whole video, but if that's what you want to see, I'm here to please. Well, I'm just here to give you information. So if that's just the information you want, then cool. Now, as far as sensitivity, the AT2040 is coming in at negative 53 decibels while the Rode Pod mic is coming in at negative 57. Now, to put this into perspective, I will let you know how I'm recording into the Zoom F6. So right now, the Rode Pod mic is recording at plus 60 decibels and the AT2040 is recording at plus 55 decibels. So they're roughly in the same range, maybe a little bit hotter on the uh, 2040 side, but it depends on how I'm talking. I try to turn these things a little to the side so I can brush off some of the plosives and I don't have to worry about it being too like obnoxious with that. I'm doing this without any pop screens to give you an idea of how this will be used without them, obviously, but if you are interested in Plosive tests. We'll be doing that in the booth. Now, the last thing we're going to cover in Techie Talk is the frequency response curve. And you know how I feel about the frequency response curve. And if you don't, just ask people down in the comments if uh, they know. So, the last thing frequency response curve and the frequency responses specifically on the 2040, it says it goes from 80 hertz to 16 kilohertz, which is a little bit eh, in my opinion. The Rode Pod mic, on the other hand, is a standard 20 to 20. So let's get into the actual curves and see how they differ. And maybe they reflect the tone. A lot of times they do because this is how they are tuned. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the lows in these microphones. You can see that the Rode Pod mic has a more flat curve on that low end, but it goes straight down to 20 hertz. So you're not losing any frequencies down there. You're not losing any tones that may be useful for a person with a more bassy voice. And of course, it starts to rise up past 100 hertz and starts to peak around 150 and then moves on to the mids. With the AT2040, this really kind of annoys me because as a broadcast microphone, usually you want to emphasize those low ends. You want to emphasize more of a broadcast sound so everyone knows what a broadcast sound is. But if I got a little bit closer, maybe you notice a little bit more of the lows, but you might lose some of those lows uh, because of the way it's tuned. So diving a little deeper, you notice that it's from 80 hertz and it's a natural roll off, meaning there is no way of getting it back. It's just gone. They started at 80 or technically they kind of start a little bit around 100 and then start to dip off. In which case, you don't have the option, if you even wanted to, to have those tones in your performance, which takes away from your low end and emphasizes all the rest. Moving on to the mids, this is where the AT2040 kind of like redeems itself a little bit. On the Rode Pod mic, on the other hand, you have a dip, a big dip, between like 200 and about like 800 before it rises up to 900 above zero decibels to a peak going back down past a thousand and that's done with the mids roughly and it's tuned it scoops out some of those muddy tones for the majority of people and then peaks up as it goes and gives you a little more of a presence boost depending on the source depending on your voice this could be good this could be bad i say this a lot in my videos the 2040 on the other hand it has the same kind of scoop not as drastic and it also doesn't have that peak around 1k at 1k it starts to rise up into the highs finally let's go to the highs with the road pod mic you have a dip past the thousand and then starts to rise up and it rises up around 3k at a peak four and a half k at a peak it dips down around six seven k at a low like valley there and then rises up around 9k and then dips off like every other microphone after 10, 11, 12K around that time, time, frequency, you know what I'm talking about. The 2040, on the other hand, rises up starting around 1K-ish after it has that dip in the mids, 
and rises up to a peak around 3.5K. At that point, it starts to dip down, a little bit of bumps here and there, but for the most part, has a nice steady dip. And I think the reason why I'm, when I listen to it now, of course, on a chart, before we get into the tone, on a chart, I kind of prefer the 2040. So in on paper, I prefer the 2040. But when it comes to the tone, because those low ends, because that low end is so like altered and like basically, for lack of better terms, neutered, you 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 just you're taking away from like some things that people want in a microphone. All right, so the next couple of tests are going to be noise and off-axis rejection. So I'm going to be quiet for a little bit. Some things you might hear is a dehumidifier in the other room, my mini fridge here, and the fan on my computer, all things that you could possibly have in your rooms as well. I'll boost it up a little bit in post and I'll let you know in the corner. So throughout this video, I've been talking about two, three inches away from these microphones, the distance that you should be talking into these microphones. They are dynamic microphones. They are broadcast microphones, so you should be right up on them to give it more of that broadcast style. But to give a little bit more of a understanding of how these microphone microphones, microphones react, I'm going to back up a bit. So I'm about like a foot and a half, two feet away, and you get a little bit more of the room when you have me talking at this distance and this is what it's going to sound like in a mildly treated room nothing crazy but uh there's a lot of stuff in the room so it certainly helps with the reflections off the walls and stuff like that but you still get some room noise when you're not as close to any microphone regardless of what type it is okay now we're on the 90 degree stage left right here on the road pod mic side this is what it's going to sound like with the 90 degree off axis rejection and that side of the room is fairly uh, cluttered and uh, there's a lot of stuff there. So you're probably not getting much reflection back. Moving over to stage right, the AT2040 side. I'm about a foot and a half, two feet away from the AT2040 and a little bit further away to the Rode Pod mic. Uh, that side of the room has masonite on the walls. A little bit of treatment, a little bit of foam on one of the walls, but for the most part, it's not too bad. They got a flag there that will certainly absorb a little bit, but not crazy amounts. And then you got the uh, curtain there, which certainly doesn't reflect anything back. It absorbs pretty much everything. Now we're at 180 degrees. And remember, we got a cardioid here and a hypercardioid here. So you got a little bit of pickup on that back of the hypercardioid on the 2040. You might have more rejection on the road pod mic side so keep in mind those specific details so we're back on stage left and i just want to point out these sweet spots i did this with the zdm1 with the off axis rejection so i'm around 120 135 degrees and you're going to notice more rejection on both of these microphones but hopefully a little bit more on the at2040 and back on stage right this is going to be the off axis rejection in the rough sweet spot 120 to like 150 degrees in between this is more like 150 degrees here and 120 around here now that we're done here let's go ahead into the booth and talk about the tones of these microphones and really give it a good example of what you're actually getting with the how these microphones are going to sound all right so we're in the booth right now with the at2040 and the classic now it's been out for a couple of years the pod mic road pod mic to be specific now, the thing is with these two, I've recorded a couple of videos with the AT2040 and a ton with the pod mic. And what I'm noticing is that the 2040 is still like, I, I every time I listen to it, I hear it differently. And this is one of those times where it keeps coming back to that mid-heavy tone. It might sound a little bit harsh, but I think they were negligent when it comes to uh, tuning this microphone. I feel that they shouldn't have taken away so much low end. And I'm going to continue to stand by that statement uh, just because it's true. I mean, you roll off 80 hertz and not giving us an option to have anything lower than that. It needs to be, you need to get up on it. You need to really get up on it and get some proximity effect. And the problem is that plosive 
like sometimes if you don't get it just right, if you don't get the angle just right, that that plosive, like if they slip, they could be rough. Which, if you have been paying attention, these two microphones have supposedly built-in windscreens in them. And that's what we're going to test right now. AT2040. Yeah, it's a little rough sometimes. On the pod mic. They're about even. Uh, I don't know. I thought it was going to be better, but the uh, rejection of plosives is not super great. Now, to finish up in the booth here, let's talk about the tones a little bit more. You really notice that when you get up close on these microphones, you get the full performance of them, what they are intending you to use these microphones for. When you back up a little bit more, you lose some of that bass, of course. It obviously proximity effect adds more bass. So you get up on it and you get a nice tone of it. I see a lot of people, especially in like streamers and things like that, they just pop it up and whatever distance it is, that's what it is. I mean, you get good quality audio regardless it's just as far as me being nitpicky and being a person of um audio tech and uh i don't know whatever youtuber status you want to give me almost monetized by the way we're about 200 and something away let's go into the untreated room because it is getting hot in here and no i'm not taking off any clothes Okay, so we're in the untreated room right now with the AT2040 in the pod mic, obviously, because you're watching the video. And of course, I've been recording all this stuff all at once, all the untreated room things for my comparisons, because it's just easier to do it all in one fell swoop. This is actually the first of uh, one batch of videos, and then I got another batch of videos that are coming up, mostly revolved around comparing microphones to the AT2040. And it's a, it's a cool concept of using a microphone like this. It is a hypercardioid polar pattern, which is obviously different than the pod mic's cardioid polar pattern. Now, the things we're going to do in the untreated room, just for you guys who don't know, let's get a lay of the land. I do this in all my videos just to have people understand to see if you could relate. 10 by 10 room, 10 foot ceiling. So has a ceiling fan, has an air conditioner, area rug above a wood floor. And there's a lot of stuff in the room, so it shouldn't be too bad with echo. Stuff in the room usually helps with the echo. Reflective walls uh, that are parallel of each other usually are not good for microphones or audio recording. All right, so let's do some noise tests. We're going to do regular, just me not talking. And obviously, you got the mix between my voice and the room normally then we're going to do with the fan with the fan and me talking and air conditioner high and low with me and with me talking and not talking i could talk not very well but i could talk <laughs> all right and uh that was your noise test regular just to mention the air conditioner downstairs is going off and there's nothing i could do about it so if you hear that obviously it was boosted 10 decibels so if you hear that that could be something you got to deal with other noises in other parts of the house that just you can't have you don't have any control over so keep these things in mind let's turn on the fan and see how it is All right, so the fan is on, and you just heard the uh, noise test with it boosted a little bit. Now it's regular noise and me mixing my voice with the fan on. If you have a ceiling fan or something similar to that, like a fan in the room, this could be something you could relate to. Uh, remember, hypercardioid polar pattern kind of hones in a little bit, so you might not have as much uh, fan noise because it is above it and in kind of in that sweet spot there. So let me know down in the comments if you notice a difference uh, between the cardioid and the hypercardioid polar patterns. All right, so the air conditioner is on low. This is the mix between the AC and my voice. And this is what you're gonna deal with. Unfortunately for a lot of people, uh, you can't record stuff with a microphone and be cool at the same time. I mean, it's a very rare luxury that not many people have uh, because they have uh, like AC systems and like uh, 
HVAC systems that are made to be kind of quiet, but those can be expensive. And also, if your house is not made that way with a duct system, uh, could be a problem. But even with a duct system, it, it can get noisy, if it's, especially if it's an older house. All right, so this is the mix between my voice and the air conditioner on high. This is certainly not a situation where you should be recording audio. Uh, the hypercardioid polar pattern is this right here is roughly about two, three feet away and a little bit further to the pod mic. So maybe it's a little better on the AT2040, but you guys let me know what you think. All right, so throughout this video, I've been talking about two, three inches away from the microphones, and now we're going to do backing up. 90s and 180. Now I'm about a foot away from the fronts of the microphones and this is going to be the distance test for each one of these. We obviously did this in the studio downstairs so uh, let me know what you think if the uh, room is kind of giving an echo noise whatever it may be. All right now on stage right off axis rejection 90 degrees uh, on the road pod mic side obviously and this is going to be what it's going to sound like. Obviously I said there are glass windows over there and uh, the flat wall here could possibly give some reflection uh, but for the most part this is really just how it's gonna be sounding rough two three feet away and now we're gonna go into the sweet spot to see how that hypercardioid performs now I'm in the 120 to 150 roughly give or take a couple of degrees and this was gonna sound like in the sweet spots you should be able to notice some difference in the uh, the cardioid of the, po the pod mic that's a tongue twister uh, as well but maybe more so in the hypercardioid of the AT2040 okay off axis rejection on stage left and this is what it's going to sound like with the 90 degree test on the AT2040 side in the untreated room and uh, there's a hallway over there so you may get some echo back but maybe not that bad uh, I've done a couple of tests and it doesn't seem like it is that big of a deal. Uh, it doesn't seem to reflect back or it give me any echo. So you guys let me know if you hear anything specific. And I'm about 120 to 150 degrees roughly. And this is going to be the sweet spot rejection of the hypercardioid polar pattern. Which uh, this is a good test to try out. Uh, with some noises in your room, possibly a fan of a computer, come some other noises, maybe the keyboard, whatever it may be. Last but certainly not least, the 180 degree test. And remember, the AT2040 is a hypercardioid, so it has a little bit of pickup on the back. The cardioid of the pod mic certainly rejects a lot more than a hypercardioid. All right, so that is our untreated room test and we're gonna head down to the studio and uh i'll let you know my impressions on how i listen to these and i listen to the whole video and then i do my outro right afterwards to give a more educated uh ear for all these tests that i've done and there it is the at4040 versus the rode pod mic and i have the rode pod mic here because it's my preferred microphone in this comparison i I'm a little surprised, but in other ways, I'm not really surprised because I know what I was expecting after I did that individual video of the AT2040. I knew the tone was going to be a little off-putting. There are really redeeming qualities about the AT2040. Uh, the off-axis rejection was excellent. It was fantastic. It did a great job at rejecting noise. Even the air conditioners uh, were not really much of a match for it they of course you heard them but as as opposed to a cardioid polar pattern the hypercardioid on there was excellent they did a great job at making that and the rejection of noise certain areas are better than others but as far as the rejection of noise like handling noise it's good and do you need a shock mount not necessarily you can do without it and if you want to spend the extra cash you can if you got it on sale if you find it on ebay whatever it is it fits the 20 series microphone so it's a great option uh but you don't necessarily need it one last thing about the at2040 i feel that like i keep saying in every video and 
I don't really hear this very much in a lot of mic reviews. I watch a lot of mic reviews myself because I want to be educated in all this craziness in the audio world. It really depends on the person and the source that's going into the microphone. Not every person is tuned the same way. Just like not every microphone is tuned the same way. The AT2040 could fit a lot of people's voices and I really do feel that they wouldn't have done what they did unless they knew that there would be people out there that would want it. And I feel that maybe it narrows the market, but for a specific person who thinks that it could be for them and maybe even know it's for them, that is a great microphone for that person. Not for me. For me, I prefer something a little more smooth, less restrictive. I try to be kind of fair with my comparisons and my mic reviews. Um, trying to think of other people other than myself and the way that I hear it. I try to use the frequency response curve and try to use these technical things to help you guys understand it a little bit better. And hopefully I gave that to you here. But the Rode Pod mic is my preferred one, at least on my voice. And if you have any other suggestions of sources or anything you want me to put into this microphone and the AT2040, let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions, comments, or anything whatsoever, down in the comments. Also, while I stream on the weekends and possibly during the week, just keep an eye out. If you hit the notification bell and subscribe, you'll know exactly when I go live. Also, like this video. If you liked it, please like the video. I really appreciate that. It helps this video, helps this channel, and gets me closer to monetization because it gets out to more people, and hopefully they subscribe too. And that's all I got for you today. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. It's too focused on being Morgan Freeman. The raccoon didn't stand a chance for the shirkin. The shirkin was too much for the furry friend.